Welcome to Hash Time with Navguzi Chuanuka. This is a place where we help you unravel social constructs, discuss self-development in line with mental health, emotional well-being, and everything in between that directly or indirectly affects us in the millennial world around us. If you're hearing my voice for the first time and are the kind of person who is not scared of being a better version of yourself even if it requires you to contradict who you were 24 hours ago, consider this your virtual home. I'm your host, Navguzi Chuanuka, and I cannot wait to engage with you in the various conversations. Hey y'all, welcome back from the Take a Pause Month and thanks so much for joining me for episode 76 of Hashtag with Navguzi Chwanuka. We will get right into the conversation after a word from our sponsors. This episode is sponsored by Edge Press Cloud. They are dedicated to helping you create an internet presence for your brand, your business, firm, and anything you can think of that can have a website. Edge Press Cloud gives out lifetime.com domain registration to its customers. You can check out my website, nabguzichwanka.com, to have an idea of what you too can get from their services. For more information about their services, visit edgepress.cloud. One of the wonders I would swear was impossible to find was someone doubling as a doctor and a comedian. On set with me today is Dr. Hilary Okello. He is the only medical personnel in Uganda making a living from comedy. The first time I saw his profile on social media, I was sure doctor is just a title he picked on to stand out among his fellow stand-up comedians. But to my shock, he was indeed a doctor. And since then, I have been very curious about how he found his himself at the intersection of science and art. Our conversation explores his childhood, his love for medicine and fun, the importance of a tribe that encourages your craft, and so much more that you will get to hear in the conversation. If something resonates with you during our conversation, please share with us on social media with the hashtag HTNK in session. Here is our conversation. Are you okay? <laughs> but it's nice to see you, but I think this is the first time we are meeting. Well, I saw you on stage. Yeah, like in person, like shaking hands. Did we even shake hands? Oh, <laughs> can, can we do it now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> We've done it now. It's weird, but it's, but it's nice to see you. Nice you're to see you too. Great. I love what you're doing with the podcast. Um, I'm an ardent listener. Uh, the thing, the thing I like about your podcast is you ask very, very, very deep questions, right? Mm-hmm. So like you go where people don't expect you to go. So I hope people are not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Let them sit tight. Yeah. Let them sit tight. Help us understand what Hillary O'Kella looked like. Eight years old. Who, who are you before you even go that far? Mm. For someone who has not even heard your name, who is Hilary Okello? Well, I'm a student of life, so I'm always trying to learn and get better. I'm, uh, I'm a medical personnel. I studied clinical medicine. I, uh, I do stand-up comedy, and uh, that is in terms of profession and career. But origin, mm-hmm. I'm, f- I'm from Lira. That is Lira. I don't like to call it a city. Why? You know, like I, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is about Ugandans and cities, but I like to keep I status. Guess, I maybe status, but there's I don't see any difference between the district and the city. So, you know, I'm from Lira, uh, but Lira has split into everything. Lira, Lira, yeah. those are Lango. Yes. Mm-hmm. Someone told me Langi is wrong. Yeah, it's Lango. Lango. I'm a Lao. Oh, there, yes. you don't pronounce that G. G is not there. Lao. Lao. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> That's why it's Kopango, not Kopango. Uh, ah, yeah. come on. <laughs> so there's a certain sex tone to it, right? It's mm-hmm, sort of slight. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so Lira was split into everything, Otuke, Alepton, you know. My dad is from Otuke. So to some extent, I would say I'm from Otuke. Yeah. Because that's where father's home is, that's where grandparents are from. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I grew up mostly in Lira and Kampala. Lira and Kampala. Yeah. Uh, did you just like, was it like, an, you know that thing we started in mm-hmm. primary? Rural urban migration. <laughs> why, why, why did you migrate for the urban? Uh, did you just move? Um, uh, you had two homes. I, 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 I think I moved when, uh, when I was still young because I was born in Lira, but most of my childhood was in Kampala because I even did, uh, I did my kindergarten in Kampala, nursery oh. school. I did uh, my primary. 
at Nakasero. Nakasero Primary School. Ah, you're an urban two. one, eh? Hey, what, what? <laughs> My friend, I started from villages. Let me, let me. Put, you don't know where the, we don't know where the story is going. <laughs> so I did, I did uh, Nakasero Primary School till P5, and at that point, I was so fluent in Luganda. Like I was so fluent, I didn't deserve the name Okello. Like I was supposed to be Mukasa. <laughs> Same <laughs> you know, one camp or something. I was so good in Luganda. Yeah. And and my dad was not happy about it. Oh. So uh you can imagine I was in P5. What what problem did he have with that? No, did just, he have a problem that you were fluent in Luganda and had and, problems and almost, with the almost, language? Almost, almost didn't know. Almost didn't know Langi. Like I was not fluent at all. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't hold a two minute conversation oh, in my oh, mother tongue. Oh. So he told me, he said, No, no, you cannot be here. You are speaking in Luganda. <laughs> Oh but you can't, speak, you can't speak Langi. So P6 and P7, uh, he took me to Lira, and I studied in a school called Adiel, Adiel Boarding Primary School. This is just because of the language? This is because of the language. And of course, at first, there's that cultural shock. You're very confused. What did you... <laughs> you know, like the food... What did you find? The food different. <laughs> what, did, <laughs> what did you find there? The food that's different, you know. Uh, you know, the also... The, the, the the colleagues the classmates that you find you mm. know there's a different lifestyle what was different the classrooms right who would, would sit in desks and uh, like the whole class is packed there's no space people don't have bags right oh people come with so you, you were the only you, one with a you bag you know these I was among the lucky ones <laughs> you know because most uh, in in northern Uganda most most kids have this it's like a strap. Okay. Yeah. You've seen like this African African print bag that ladies mm, have. Mm, so there's mm. a strapping and then sort of like a square. So you find it's like maroon. It's just a maroon kind of material. Yeah. And that is the bag. So I'm, I'm assuming they might have been tailored. Yeah, most of them are tailored. Most of them are tailored. So it was that kind of life, you know, waking up, waking up to go for church, you know, to wake up uh, like at five. Yeah. every Sunday and then you walk from school up to the cathedral you go in the cathedral you go and sit behind the piano there was like a piano on stage yeah so the stage and, like like on uh, please church in the church Why are what you is calling it called it? I'm, used, I'm used to calling anything <laughs> where people stand on a stage what is it called <laughs> what is it called is it like, not a stage where the altar is yeah yeah where the priest is talking it's and not all a that. stage what is it called I don't know I just know I just know where the altar is okay the stage like <laughs> The stage-like portion of the church. So it was like a big, a big old piano, and uh, they would put all of us behind there. How many were side. you? The whole of because because boarding was P six and P seven. Mm-hmm. So I think we we're close to, I think close to two hundred or less. So there are some would be in the choir. Some would be with the, you know, depending on how smartly dressed you are, <laughs> how presentable you are. So they put you where people see you. Then us who look very weird. Oh, we haven't Even you the Kampala one. We haven't ironed. Even right? you the Kampala one, you did Kampala. much. <laughs> hey, you represented us terribly. Very terribly. <laughs> So would be behind the piano, sleeping, dozing, having conversations in church. So it was, it was all of that because you are not used to that kind, that kind. You weren't going to church back at home. No, I was going to church back at home, but it wasn't that kind of hustle. Because in Kampala, we would go to uh, Christ the King. Yeah, he yeah. Now yeah. Comp- compare. <laughs> The hymns are sung differently, like you know, you really feel God is in your presence. <laughs> but it was, but it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. And I remember in Adiel, we had there were like two churches uh, for the Catholics and uh, for the Protestants. Mm-hmm. So every often would go to the to the cathedral once in a while. But most Sundays there was this new church that they were building next to our school. It had no lights, no sound system, nothing. It was made of, uh, made of, you know, the brick walls, but it has not been finished. There's no furnishing or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so I'm a Catholic. I know. I, but, but I notice when you say Christ the King. But the Protestant the church was, it had swag. Like it had. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? You know what I mean? Like there was lights, there was flowers, there was oh. all of that. Right, but the other one was still being constructed. And the other interesting thing is with the Protestant church at that time, they would allow they would allow like people to perform and sing and dance. Then they would give people like, During the service. Yeah, during the service they would give people like biscuits and juice. <laughs> so you sit there and ask yourself, should I go here? That was a bribe. It was like a bribe. So <laughs> 
So there are times when, and because I like, like, I used to like, like, singing and being part of those activities. So I would end up going. There's a time when I stopped even going to the Catholic church. So I'd always go to the Protestant church. The school wasn't strict? No, it wasn't strict. It didn't have, like, a list that said Hillary or mm-hmm. Catholic. Yeah. So it'd go the other side, and I don't understand the service because I'm not used to this Protestant service. Friend. But I'm just... I have never, I've never I've understood. Never You've never understood? I have, I have never... never it has no order. <laughs> it, has, it has no order. They, they stand any time. They're just there freestyling. Freestyling throughout. <laughs> like, if, if the, if, uh, what are they called? Are they called priests? The reverends? Reverends. reverends yes. If the reverend decides we should stand, you stand. Like, there's no, <laughs> there's no protocol. But, but the thing I loved about the, the Protestant church at the time was just the performances. So we'll just go and be mumbling at the back, waiting. When, uh, when the reverend says, okay, now if anybody wants to sing for us or to dance for us, then we just raise our hands. We go in front. Wow. And we sing those songs, you know, by the rivers of Babylon, you know, those kind of songs. Yeah. Yeah. And then some people come and give you money and uh-huh. like, you're like, Ooh, you get this Jewish, you're like, church went well. It was a good Sunday. <laughs> It's not even about what what preached. Nah, we don't know what they preached on that day, but we ate biscuits, so that was, so, that was the fun. Coming to you mm. as a medical personnel, that, yeah. let me tell you something. I don't remember when I met friends with you on social media. Yeah, but I thought the doctor beat was just. The way how someone calls themselves the president yeah, you just of the ghetto. Yourself. You're like his excellency, yeah. Thank you. Mm. And then one time I think you posted a picture of you in the gun and I was like, this is real. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of a lot of people are surprised by like, it. this is real? A lot of people are surprised by it. I think it's because I don't practice as much. So most of my most of the stuff people see is because I brand myself as a comedian. So most people mm-hmm. see stage photos and backstage and all of that. So I don't post a lot of photos in me. In there are a few. Clinical court or something. I think I've seen like two. I don't few. know. So the very first one I was like, they are, this is real. There are very few. I was <laughs> There are very few. Were sciences something that you wanted to do? Yeah, I was very deliberate about it. Mm-hmm. Like uh, from, uh, I think from my childhood, you know, from my childhood, it's like, there's like a handful of professions that you know about. Right. I don't think you knew podcasting at all. <laughs> <laughs> How do you explain to your mother at four years when they ask you, oh, no. busy, what do you want to do when you grow up? It doesn't exist. Oh, you my kick goodness. You out of the house. <laughs> no, I wouldn't have been kicked out, I'm certain. But okay. uh, I didn't know it. Would kick me. <laughs> <laughs> at, least I know my, at least I know my father. They would kick me out. <laughs> Podcast that we have never had. Oh, that so we've never, we've never had. Please let us be serious. <laughs> so I think with 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 Ugandan families, I yeah. think the average Ugandan family, mm-hmm. uh, there's like a handful of professions. It's either an engineer or you're a doctor or you're a nurse or you are uh, a teacher or you know a lawyer. A lawyer. So it's mm-hmm. it's just a handful to pick from. Uh, but as you grow up, you realize, wait, you can also be a DJ. <laughs> And yeah. make money. You can also be a, a journalist and this and that. Uh, so for me, I think the thing that really drove me into medicine is I just like to answer some questions that come with life. Mm-hmm. So I just I just found of all things, I found medicine very fascinating. Oh yeah. Because mm, I just thought if uh, uh, somebody just you talk to someone, you tell them your problem, mm-hmm. and he says, okay, go and take metronidazole, or it will help you. Yeah. And I'm thinking, how does he know it will help me? Like yeah, that is very yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So when I went to high school, I said I should I should do medicine. When was that that you realized? That's like before a level. You that had was, already decided. That was that, you know, Oliver had yet decided. But I have I have a couple of uh, relatives who are nurses and the like. So they kept telling me you should do medicine, you should do medicine. Yeah. And and my 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 mother and my father have always had that concrete. You know, parents. They have. Do you know that Ugandan parents? They know. They know you at forty years. Like they plan your life <laughs> before you plan your life. You know. So every time I'd have a conversation with my mother, she's like, "Okay, so now Hilary, what you do? Finish senior four. You go and do PCB. You know. You do. You'll go to Makerere. You study. When you finish, you get a, a job in a clinic or something. Uh, then you join government. Then you work. Then you join government. Yeah, because that's in their mind. Whoa! You know, from their this this is the thing I've learned from the generation of our parents. That's the mindset they have about life. 
So you join, the, you, you, they, they like the certainty of life that comes with working for government. Mm-hmm, you have mm-hmm, a job mm-hmm, in, mm-hmm. in a government hospital. And I, and I just learned about this, how many years ago? I don't know. Hey, it's, how, it's how our parents are. So, so in the minds, with the conversation I had with my, with my parents, that's how I understood it. I knew that is what they see for you. And that is, that's where all their effort is going to. They want to pay your fees. They want to see you graduate, get a job. And they pray you get into government. Wow. Because with government, there's, there's that certainty of, it, of, of payment, of salary. That's you, what I'm talking about. I yeah. just learned about it because there is someone mm. who wanted to enter the government, to, yes. to work with a government hospital. Yes. And I was like... And yes. no, people aren't paid. And then she was like, "It's not about it's that. About if I leave yeah. and go for school, I yes. can always I, I return." Can still get, yes. I was like, "Oh, okay." So, so people, that is people also don't want that stress of looking for a job. They don't want the fear of what if I lose my job next week? Yeah. Uh, what if our, our maybe our medical center gets an issue and I I, I get unemployed? Mm-hmm. So the being within the government circle means you're sure. At least you're sure you have a job. There is a job. Yes. There is job. Security. At least job security. Yeah. So, so that's that's the mindset. My. I mean, even had. the ghost has security. <laughs> <laughs> the the ghost the ghosts are employed. <laughs> Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> so, so it, it's uh, from from an early age. I learned that's what my parents were were thinking about. And you were having conversations with them. Yeah. Not, not. It's not like I'm the one who even starts the conversation. <laughs> like it just comes out of nowhere, you know. Like from your results, you know, you've passed fine art very highly with a ninety-five. Yeah. But chemistry, you have thirty percent, and your mother is like, "Now you listen. <laughs> Whoa. You cannot fail chemistry. Oh my you have to be this, do this, do this, do this. Then she reads for you your life in front of you. So, wow. so by senior two, senior three, you already, you already know this is like what they have planned for me. In their minds, uh, and there was no chance. Like, no, I don't like that. No, there was a chance. Mm-hmm. There was a chance, but genuinely, I wanted to do medicine. Yeah, you talked about it was because I just wanted to understand how medicine works. In fact, to, to show you how serious I was when I finished senior four, and it was time to pick a combination of what mm-hmm. subjects I'm going to do. I passed history, highly English, and all those you know weird, weird subjects. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> You're not calling them weird after living. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all the others have you know geography and the like mm. and uh, I, I applied you know they let you apply to different schools and then they select you so I remember going to which school is that it's a St. Joseph something and uh, they had given me hell I think hell hell and, and sub math uh, there's another school that had given me I think Meg or something mm-hmm. but I wanted I wanted BCM biology chemistry and mathematics mm. so I went to our lady of good counsel it's in Gaza and they had given me BCM and my father said so what is the plan I said of course I'm going here <laughs> yeah and uh, and that, that's that's how I ended up doing that because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for them from the results I have they said you know if he wants to do sciences let him do sciences yeah so so that's how I ended up there but if I wanted to do hell or whatever I would have gone and and, and, and taken up the opportunities we're hearing your mother no Hillary you have to do this nah. what did what did the young Hillary look like <laughs> I think very excited about life. I think throughout life, I have just I've just made it an aim to have fun, <laughs> like like generally. <laughs> so if if you meet like friends, old friends, yeah, uh, OBs or students that I went with to school, I'm a standout character. So everybody remembers me. Everybody, teachers, I go back to schools. They're like, Hey, Hilary, how are you? Yeah. So everybody has you in their mind because I was always trying to just have fun. Mm-hmm. I never thought about being number one in class. It wasn't a goal. It wasn't a goal. <laughs> but it was, of course, it, it, it was something they told you before you went to school. They're like, next time, we're tired of being number five. I think in the primary, I was like number five, I think like 20 times. <laughs> and my mother kept complaining, why are you consistent? Can't you, can't you progress? Yeah? At least four, number four. And for me, in my mind, I'm like, five is good enough. You know, I just go to school. I join the drama class, join music. <laughs> I just want to have fun. Yeah. Then I read my books, pass. As long as I pass, <laughs> I'm good to go. Number one wasn't that no, important. Number one wasn't the goal. Yeah. Number one wasn't the goal. Although although now I have I have siblings. I have uh, I have a sister mm-hmm. who, is, who is very intelligent. Like she's one or two, one or two all the time. Yeah. And every time my mother, every time they're reading the results. <laughs> 
my mother looks at me and says, "You see, this is now a forecast person." Wow, they're still <laughs> taking you back. <laughs> still taking me back. You tell them, "Hey, I moved on." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but it, it's that kind of mindset where the parents believe if you're number one, then you'll make it in life. Yeah. So they, yeah. they have that yeah. thing. And and I keep telling my siblings, it's not about being number one. Just have fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's I tell them honestly. I tell them before years to come, yeah. you'll remember the years you were at school. You won't remember anything you did. So I always tell my brother, my sister. I tell them you join join a club. You know when it comes to sports day, be a goalkeeper or something. You run. Yeah. You know because those are the things that actually make life what it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Because mm-hmm. if you just sit down and read your books from morning to evening, yeah, and you don't have time to have conversations with friends, then. What is life? As someone who loved to have fun, mm. were you ever suspended? Never. You were always within the confines I of the law. Within, uh, I think. I think the thing about the laws in school is that you can bend them. <laughs> How exactly? I was uh, within within the, the spectrum of having fun. I always loved to be in leadership as well. Ah. So I was always. I think in primary, in primary I didn't engage a lot in leadership. But in secondary is when I, uh, I remember when I was ginger, in Ginger College, I was a prefect. Because I just like to pick up challenges. So I was always, uh, I always love to pick up such challenges. Because you want to learn about leadership, you want to learn how to be in charge, mm-hmm. how, to, how to make things happen. Yeah. Uh I don't like to see things happen. Like if there's an event, I want to play a role. If I'm not the MC, I should be helping guys with maybe setting up the chairs or doing. I just I don't want to be the one who just arrives and sits down. <laughs> <laughs> so I always like you know to participate in 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 uh, in making things happen. So because I was a prefect, I it sort of made me disciplined. Oh, so you I had much, to be. How much I have fun. You had to be exemplary. But I had, had to be exemplary. So I was one of those prefects that people just loved because I'm the, I'm having fun. <laughs> You're part of you want to be part of you. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> we are having fun. I'm like, by the way, don't step the flowers. <laughs> Because I will take you to the to the teacher, so so they're like, yeah, let's have fun, but let's not step the flowers. Oh yeah. So so they understand uh, where you're coming from. Mm, so as mm, you're having mm, fun mm. and doing all of that, they're like, hey, by the Hitler is a prefect, so let's keep it with it. Ah, uh, but I think that's better. Mm. I had there was this girl who whom I would speak Luganda with. Mm, mm. She was a prefect. <laughs> Oh, and then yeah. when you're done with the conversation, yeah. she writes your name. Like, okay, okay, now that is just okay. Now that's just no. that's just me. <gasps> we were talking. What I'm like, yeah, together? you spoke local. <laughs> yeah, we're talking together. Ah, uh, people always wonder about us. Like, ah, be careful with yeah, that one. Those are snakes, man. Those are snakes. <laughs> And I, by the talking about Philip Vanakal, I remember in primary, uh, we had we had this thing in in, in Lira where they would get like a bone. I think, mm. it, was, I think it was. I think you, you've you've been through that. I, I wore a sack, and then <laughs> the very last, <laughs> the very last you one. You should get a medal from the Kabaka. There were cards exactly. We were, yeah. I, 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 I've ever joked about it yeah. when I was still in school. Yeah. I got a card. I used to get cards in mm. primary school, mm. but I always. I don't know. I think I just never cared yeah, yeah, to yeah. follow up where I leave them. Yeah. So most of the people, whenever they would follow up the chain, yeah. who was last with the card, yes, yes. it was always me. It was always you. <laughs> but wouldn't you, wouldn't you find someone else to give it to? I think I wasn't really interested in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because now, now why was, was I even... No, there was not that feeling of revenge, like I want to get someone else. No, because even yeah. the Lugana that I was speaking, it's mm-hmm. not... It's not. It was not by accident that I was doing it. Was it. Intentional. I, it was intentional. It was more like a protective yeah, yeah. mechanism for yeah, me yeah. because the kids were bullying me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of how I was speaking English, yeah, so yeah. I felt like I'm safer in Uganda. Mm, so, mm. Uh, like, okay, yeah, I'm what, ready for the punishment. What was your punishment like? Before I tell you my, there were canes in primary. Yeah. Then I don't know at what point. Maybe the sacks came in in P seven. What is the sack for? Like you walk around in a sack. Yeah, it on top of the uniform. Yeah. You 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 get dressed. For you how know long? how it's like a gown. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember how long it was. Then in senior one, I think, or no, senior three, mm-hmm. because I had cousins in senior mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. I met their day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We had chats, the plus chats. They even found me sleeping in class. And the prefects called me out and they step on. But you were notorious. You speak Luganda, you were sleeping. <laughs> Can you do one thing right? Can you just choose, choose? Oh, in all level, I was wild. Choose something. At least I was be known wild. for sleeping only. So they, they, they step with those chats mm. like 
stay far away from me. I am yeah, yeah. something on, like on, infectious. On your, on your uniform, yeah. I'm infectious, something mm, of that mm. kind. I was like, okay. <laughs> you had an interesting childhood. <laughs> we should do a podcast where I ask you questions. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think that was it. For us, we, we also had a similar thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, to get for us, it was like a bone. I think it was either for a chicken. That was very tiny. Yeah, because like the one, you should be able to pocket it. Ah, this one, this was hard to be worn. They were really huge bones. Yeah, because for, for us, it was all about, uh, like that's just to identify. So they would, the prefect would move around when the week begins, on a Monday, mm-hmm. and he finds you speaking low, and he gives you the bone. <laughs> he pulls you aside. I don't know why they're very subtle about it. He pulls you aside, he's like, you are speaking low. Here is... <laughs> I like don't make it loud. It's not a public thing. Why? And and people are, people are very sneaky. Person, person is like, yeah, hey, sorry, sorry. He picks the picks the boots <laughs> in his pocket, <laughs> and he also moves around looking for people who are speaking low. In fact, the ones even instigate. The ones who start it, right? He comes wow. to you and says, "Hey, ole, it's here, nengo, kopang." Or then you reply, "Ah, yeah, Barry says you are speaking low." <laughs> he hands you the ball. <laughs> so you, it can it can make it can move to close to thirty people. In just one day. So at the end of the day, the prefect comes and follows up and finds out how many people. Mm-hmm. Then that goes on till the end of the week. Then on Saturday is when is, is when the, the game general the punishment begin. <laughs> <laughs> what happens? Would go to the dormitory, uh, the P seven dormitory, and uh, and then they would line you up. So they would send you to go and call whoever you gave the bond, mm. and he would also call whoever gave the bond. So there would be like a line of of thirty culprits who come from just one bond. And I don't know why they used to call it. I think they used to call it. They used to call it the Champions League, sort of like that some football reference. And so they would line you up, and then the prefects start caning you. Prefects. Yeah, it's the prefects, not teachers. It was the prefects. King. To some extent, I think it is child child labor or child abuse or something. Prefects. So, prefects, yeah. Primary. Primary. That's sick. That was sick. And they would use, uh, they would use uh, some of them were scouts. So they would use the ropes. You know the ropes that scouts would make where they tie them. Were Were teachers aware of this? Yeah, teachers were aware. If anything, they would approve. <laughs> it was wow. their life. It was their life. So, so the prefect would come with like a rope that is tied in so diff- so many different styles. The way scouts tie their things, and so they would, they would beat you each. He goes, he makes one round. Another prefect comes and beats you like that. Whoa! So that was that, that was their life. That is sick. Mm. And and up to now, I don't know why it still exists. Like I don't know in Uganda as a whole. I don't know why speaking vernacular in school is still a bad thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know, because mm-hmm. because a lot of people finish school and then they are not they are not fluent. In their own their own mother tongue, which oh, is, we have so many. Which is weird. We have so many. <laughs> you've, you've seen you've seen people come from abroad and then they come for Kwanjula here, mm-hmm. and the speeches are just absurd. I don't know which minister is in charge of that. And we don't have that. <laughs> we don't have that. <laughs> so here we are having Okello under the umbrella of comedy mm. and medicine. Mm. Is there any other person like that? <laughs> have you seen any? In Uganda? Yeah, let's start with Uganda. In Uganda, no. I don't know any medic who is doing comedy. Mm-hmm. In South Africa, there's a, there's a friend of mine. His name is Dr. Riyad Mosa. He's a comedian who does... He's a, he's a medic and also he does comedy. So I is, think, he's, I think is he the, the only other, one that you know? He's the only one that I know. And what does that make you feel like? Have, for, have you ever been in your medical suit? Mm-hmm. And then someone knows you for comedy. Yes. What was it like? It happened. Was it shocking for them uh, when they found you? It's shocking for me. Oh, how? It's actually shocking for me. Because there's the certain persona that you have when you're in a workplace. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, it's like when you're, because you're a lawyer, right? Yeah. When you're in court. Mm-hmm. Huh? If mm-hmm. somebody meets you there and they meet you on the <laughs> podcast, they're like, ah, no, <laughs> no, forget the podcast. Yeah, yeah. The noise on or my noise Facebook. On Facebook. <laughs> or they met you at a party or something. It happened to me this week, meanwhile. Mm-hmm. A client walked in and then she kept saying how she makes sales of Facebook. And I was yeah. like, wait, mm-hmm. I have seen this name. Mm-hmm. The name is familiar. And I checked, and she was my Facebook friend. Yeah. So I was like, I hope she doesn't like know me. Like a conversational me. one, the one you always like, like their post, comment, and what? <laughs> no, she, she, she's, the she one who, just... she's the one who followed me at some point, mm. and I remember seeing her pictures. Yeah, yeah. So I had to check, and I was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and I was like, deep talking. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like... Oh You're Lord. playing it safe. <laughs> she better not see me. <laughs> I am not the one. <laughs> and because I was in charge yeah. of her. Yeah. 
No, I had to be uh, like, oh God, yes. we are different people. So it's weird. It's weird <laughs> for you because you are you are in a different persona at that time. Yeah. So so it happens to me a lot. I remember there's a time I was working in a, in a medical center in Chireka, mm-hmm. and uh, it was a very tiresome day. It was a Saturday. We had a lot of cases. There was a lot of flu going around. Kids were crying and all of that. And this guy walks in with it with his daughter. I think she's like 12 years or something. Mm-hmm. She has been having convulsions, severe malaria. So we are rushing her to the medical ward to try to give her uh, testosterone and medications and everything. And this guy looks at me and says, Hey, <laughs> Dr. Hilary. <laughs> I said, yes, sir. Nice to meet you. He said, you man, you're funny. <laughs> oh, God. So, so you can imagine. So at that point, your mind is so focused on working on his daughter. <laughs> but he's more interested in like talking to you and getting to understand. And they're also shocked also on their side because it's like, so you actually... <laughs> I thought you were joking. <laughs> you're like, no, actually, I didn't. Like, yeah, okay. So for how long? And then they start questioning you. You're like, okay, can we first do this? Because <laughs> like your child is not okay. <laughs> so it's 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 a weird it's a weird interface. Yeah. But but it's I I it's a beautiful thing to some extent because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, somebody says, you know what? I'll keep coming back here because at least I know. The person who works here. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's an yeah. trust that is built. So, so far it has happened to me, I think, seven to eight, not more than ten times. Not more than eight ta- not more ten than, times. Not more than ten. How, Just a handful. How, in how many years of practice is that? Uh, as I practiced in 20, 20, end of 2018. 2018. So you count four 19, years. 20, 21, 22. That's four years. And comedy? Comedy. How did you veer into comedy? That's wrong. Had you always <laughs> been funny from childhood? I, I don't know. Because you know, it's hard to say I was always funny. Mm-hmm. But I would say I always loved the fun, right? So like if you're in class and then people are talking or this class is quiet mm-hmm. and the teacher says something and then you, res- you heckle or you respond and people are like, ooh, that is funny. And then there's a whole, you know, just a wave of laughter that is going around. So I just like to do that. So whether it was in the chemistry lab and people are all serious and you're going to ban people with acid and all those things why were you making just like fun? The fun in the lab like I, I didn't that like, is risky business it's risky business <laughs> but at least you die laughing like it oh wow <laughs> see <ya. laughs> I, I always found it very cringy to be in an environment where people are too serious Mm. You know what I mean? And I don't know if it's just me, but I tend to remember things if they are fun. Yeah. You know? So whether it was a And then you start laughing a yeah. lot. Biology, <laughs> biology cl- lecture class and uh, we're doing this dissection of rats and all of that. And then as, as the teacher is explaining, you're like, by the way, you know I killed a rat today. And then people are laughing. <laughs> you know, it helps people remember. Because there are times during exams, you know, that pre-exam moment, like mm. one hour mm. to the test, uh, somebody comes to you and says, by the way, there's a joke you did last time. What? What were we learning on that day? Oh. So it like helps them remember what you're actually discussing. Mm. So I always found it very hard to be serious, even through medical school. I always found it hard to be serious <laughs> because I always, I just have this affinity for fun. Yeah. Like, let's just have fun because that's how I've always looked at life. Just have fun. And getting on stage. Getting on stage. It started in school, by the way. It started wow. in school. That was uh, Ginger College. Senior. Stage, and by stage, I mean comedy. Yes. Wow. School senior three. So we had we had this club. I sat down one day and I told my, I asked myself, so which clubs can I join? You know, in school there was, I think, what was it called? Interact. Mm, 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 Interact was mm, fun. Interact club. Because it was a single school. Junior College was a single school, so they always bring girls here and there. <laughs> I said, okay, no, I think I should join. <laughs> because of the girls. There's a future, yeah. There's ah, a future, there's a future. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but I didn't join Interact, actually. Mm. There was a lot of chaos. I think there was uh, also Youth Alive. There was, yes, there was also Youth Alive. So, uh, but some clubs also needed subscribing, and I was broke. Mm. So you're like, <laughs> you girls, but eh, that's a thousand. <laughs> It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I'd rather buy. It. I'd rather take care of myself. <laughs> so I joined one of the clubs. I joined called uh, uh, Current Affairs Club. So it was. It was actually. That's jo- like it was journalism. journalism. Mm. Yeah. So it was journalism. What What I loved about them is every Friday on assembly because other Friday assemblies every Friday there would uh, there was a slot for them at the end of the speeches when teachers are done they come on stage we had this assembly that, like on the main road somewhere there so there was like a raised platform where teachers would speak yeah so they would come there holding their clipboards 
and then they would just read stories of what happened during the week. Uh, during know? the week, is it national like prom, wide like or prom. school? School, they would have school and then maybe some national interesting stuff. Maybe there's an artist who came to Uganda and then mm-hmm. they sort of give that story. Or there was a football game that happened in school and then they narrate what happened. So I found it very interesting. And uh, I decided to join when I was in senior three. And when I joined, they were giving people slots. So who does the business, you know, news, mm-hmm. who does international mm-hmm. entertainment. And I was like, okay, for me, I'll just do like stupid stuff. I'll just get there and just tell people the funny side of what happened in the week. And at that time, the, the, the president of the club was like, okay, that is interesting. We've never had that. So I joined. I had, there were people in senior six. Mm-hmm. Who are, who are, there's a guy in senior six. His name was Timothy. He used to read the sports. I was always the last guy. Meanwhile, I've written, I work on my stories during prep. So you can imagine. The night before? Yeah, the night before. So people are reading books. <laughs> <laughs> people are busy cramming valences <laughs> and, you know, uh, you know, barium, sulfate and all these things. Yeah. Me, on the other hand, I'm writing, I'm trying to find jokes in, uh, <laughs> in a football match that happened between our school and another school. Yeah. Or, or prom that happened between the, our school and another girl's school. So that on Friday, I'll just come ready with like two pages. Just get, get on the platform and I'll read. And I've almost every three lines, people are just laughing. People are just laughing. People are just laughing. And that is how, like, I became a thing in school. So, like, people knew me. So that's where that's where the comedy started. Yeah. And did you have any awareness that you would get to that space? Uh, in the comedy world? Mm-hmm. I didn't know. Because me, for me, every... Every moment in school was just to have fun. <laughs> so I, I, just, I just kept telling myself, I'm left with how many years? So up to senior six, then we figure out life. Mm. So I didn't know if I was going to do comedy at all. I just knew that I'm having fun right now. I'll see if, if we shall have fun again <laughs> in the future. How did you get in the space then? How did I get in the space? It's, uh, it's, it's just a deliberate thing. The first, I think the first point of contact with someone in the industry... When I was at Our Lady of Good Council, we went to Kayaza High School mm-hmm. for some, I don't know what it was. And they brought some performers. I think it was sponsored by Mirinda. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mirinda had, yeah, those, had, things had those things going so on. So they brought some comedians and musicians and the like. And the first guy I met, his name is Dolly Bondo. I don't know if yeah, you know him. Yeah, I, I knew him. Mm. So when I recognized him, I walked to him. I was in uniform. I walked to him and said, hey, I'm so and so. I'm Hilary Okello. You know, I'm in senior five. Uh, but uh, I wanted to see how can I do comedy. Mm-hmm. Is it possible? He said, hey, it's okay. He, he, just, he just told me, do you have a pen? I said, yes. <laughs> he said, write down my number. So he, he gave me the number of Napoleon, uh, Napoleon Emma. He told me that's the guy in, in charge of recruiting performers for, for Laughter's comedy stage in Centenary Park. When it was holiday time, that's when I called the number because now I'm home. Yeah. That's when I called the number and I talked to him. I said, hi, is this Napoleon? I said, yes. I said, my name is Hilary Kello and uh, I want to do stand-up comedy. He said, okay, that is fine. Come to Centenary Park. You know where Laughters is? I said, yes. Mm-hmm. He said, be here by five. <laughs> Meanwhile, the show starts like at 10 or something. No. <laughs> he told me, be here by five. 10 in the uh, night? In the night, because the show starts late, like 9, 10. Because most comedy shows... You're a student. Uh, no, it's holidays. It's yeah, holidays. Even yeah, then, yeah. even then, you're it's young. It's not like I'm not a student when you're back. <laughs> <laughs> you're young. Yes. W- w- weren't your parents worried that you were outside at that, uh, at such hours? So no, that, that's the time that he told me. He told me five p.m. Uh, wait for me. Call me when you make it there. Mm-hmm. So I'm there by five on a Wednesday. I call him and uh, he says, "Yes, I'm on my way." And he's not there. He's not even on his way. I think he came through like at. 8, clocking to 8, 7.30, coming to 8. You didn't lose hope? No, I was waiting. Because he's my only contact. <laughs> There's nobody else I can talk to. So I waited for him. I recognized him. I went to him. He said, hey, so you're Hillary? I said, yes. Uh, he told me now, there's a gentleman you're supposed to see. Mm-hmm. His name is Sams. Uh, Sams. He's, he told me, just walk in and enter the bar. You look for Sams. You'll find him. I don't know. They, they make it sound like, like you know the person already. It's like, you go. You'll find him. But why didn't he tell you before? <laughs> Instead of waking, you wait for that long. No, that's, 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 that's how the industry is. So told me, just walk in, look for Sam's. He's the one who brings the new acts. So I walk in, I find, you know, bars, uh, there's a corner of shisha and what, and guys are smoking shisha. That's a, I don't know what they're smoking. And that's a 
drinks are everywhere and uh, he's in the midst of all of that chaos. So I walk to him, I talk to him, I introduce myself. Mm. He says, okay, do you have any video clips? Oh, by the way, all of this is not when I was in senior three. This is, this is 2017 now. Mm, this okay, this okay, university. Okay. I got the number, I just kept the number. Mm. I didn't have any video clips because where would I have a video from? <laughs> I told him, no, you see, I'm still at campus, but uh, I do a lot of events like hosting, I'm emceeing at school and what's like, yeah, but if you don't have a video, then how do I know that, that you're as good as you say you are? So he tells me, since you don't have a video, if you get a video, send it to me on, on, on Facebook or something. They were insistent. He, he was, was insistent in, he, on he was, a video. That was like his proof that you're good. You couldn't just do it there and then? Come on, it's a bar, people are drinking, people are doing what? Yeah, you can make them laugh. And he doesn't really care. You, you know what I mean? It's you not need like, him. It's not like he really needs you. Be like, no, no, because if he really needed you, he would say, okay, let's first go here, tell me something and let's see. So he doesn't really care. It is you to prove to, prove to him. So I told him, if I get a video, I'll send you. Mm. And uh, he sent me to, there's a bar next door. It was called Waikiki. It's now called Black and White, I think, today. There was another comedy group that was there. Mm-hmm. They were called the Punchliners. And he told me, what you do, you go there on Thursdays. That was the next day. There's a gentleman called Timothy Nyanzi. You look for him. So I've just been, I've been referred to like <laughs> three people now. Like you go to look, ask for a guy called Timothy Nyanzi. Yeah. He's in charge of the new comedians in that comedy group. Once he says you're ready, then we shall put you on laughters. Without the video? Without the video. Because he trusts the other guy's opinion. So Thursday, I, I, I go back on my social media. I look for Timothy Nyanzi, mm. send a friend request as usual. <laughs> I look for, then I look for comedians that I know uh, in terms of where I'm from. So there's a guy, there's Daniel O'Mara, mm. there's Agnes Akite. So those are like northerners. Yeah. Then there's a guy called Okelo Okelo. He's a good friend of mine. So I inbox Okelo Okelo. Uh, I told him, I'm so and so, you know, I want to do comedy. He's like, yeah, it's okay. You come on Thursday and you'll meet me and Timothy and then we talk about it. So I go there on another Thursday, not the next Thursday. I go there on another Thursday. I find uh, comedians there at the bar. People are chatting, talking. Emeka is there. Okelo, Okelo, Timothy, Akite, all these, all these people are there. So there are faces you recognize. Mm-hmm. There are faces you don't recognize. And to some extent, you're like starstruck because like, these are people you see on TV, TV. every week, right? So I, I approached Timothy. I talked to him. He's like, okay, so you're the, you're the guy they told me about. He said, okay, cool. Uh, I said, okay, so what we're doing right now is we're going through material. So if you have some jokes, let us go through them. We see how to make them better. Then uh, there's always opportunity. Oh, there is such thing as making them better. Yes, making them better. Do you know that day there was a football game? I think it was Uganda Cranes versus something. So... Literally, I perform to these guys when there's a game going on. So you're, you're standing there. They're seated here. There's a screen right behind you. So basically, there's a lot of you're basically competing. They are, they are watching the game. They're not even looking at you, right? So you're doing your stuff, and people are looking. At, you think they're looking at you, but they're watching the game. Mm-hmm. At the end of it, they're like, "Yeah, yeah, not bad, not bad, not bad." <laughs> <laughs> and on that night, there was a show. Like they had a show. Yeah. On that Thursday night, and I thought I was going on. I thought I was going to perform, uh, but I wasn't going to perform apparently because I wasn't on the lineup. You don't just come the first day you're there. Mm. It's the day you perform. So I wait. The show starts, I think, at 10 p.m. Meanwhile, I stay in Naguru, and I came walking, and I have to go back walking. Wow. Because I don't have money. I cannot get a border or something. So I'm there until 10 p.m. when the show starts. The first performer goes on stage. The second goes. So I go, I go to Timothy. I ask him, I say, so what time do I? He's like, what do you mean, what time do you? Oh, my goodness. Said, Stepping on stage. Like, <laughs> no, you're not, you're not on the lineup. After waiting. After waiting, yeah. I, I left. I said, but thank you. We shall keep in touch. I walked back home. So that was, that was like my first contact with the like real contact with What people. did that feel like after you doing your, should I call it a Going trial content, day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, no, we're and not. Then, yeah, it feels that breaking. Because like you come with all the vegan, all the energy and you have expectations. Mm-hmm. They're like today, at least today, uh, when, you're, when you're starting comedy, your only goal is to get on stage. Like that is all you want. All you want is to get on stage. Mm-hmm. So once you, you miss out on that, once you're denied the opportunity, it really breaks you. And uh, I remember I just walked home. You know, Kololo, very dark place. 
uh, you're even scared of like thieves yeah. or something. But you also look at yourself and like, now what will they rob if they grab? <laughs> Does that make sense? You feel safe. You're like, even if thieves find me, I don't have a watch. So if anything, they can help me. So, so I walked home that night. And then I kept coming every Thursday for rehearsals. Oh, you kept going? Yeah, I kept going. The second, I think the, at that point, I started looking out for comedy platforms, like uh, competitions per se. So there was a competition. Uh, that was, that's the time I was at campus. So I was at Clark International University. And there was a competition with comedy files. So they put up this poster that is calling out for people who think that they're funny. If you want to do comedy, yeah. uh, you come and sign up with us. So as usual, I'm excited. I'm like, oh, this is, this is a good opportunity. So I was broke. I was at university. I didn't have cash or anything. Yeah. And it comes to a point where it's not just you who wants to get on stage. Even your, your friends, they want you to get on stage. They're like, oh. bro, you're good, man. Why don't you do why, this? Why weren't, so they, sometimes why weren't you like passing yeah. around a basket and you collect <laughs> transport? <laughs> Mumpai was a mumpai. Support a brother. So <laughs> to achieve the to dream. To achieve the dream, yes. So I go to I go to theater La Bonita because that's where the auditions were happening. And I go and find out what is necessary. They said, no, you just need twenty thousand to sign up. I said, hey, twenty thousand. I was like, yo, where do I get that money? <laughs> I, you know, I can't ask my dad for twenty thousand for a competition. <laughs> <laughs> Banishment. For, for what? <laughs> So, so I, I, asked, I asked the president, the guild president, who was a friend of mine. I told him, you know what? I have this comedy thing I want to go for. He's like, yeah, you should go by there for the things. I said, yeah. I said, but I just don't have money. He said, how much? He said, 20,000. I said, that's okay. He pulled out a 20K note. He gave it to me. He said, you go, you go and do it. Just let me know how it goes. On that day, I woke up to the theater La Bonita. I sign up. So then they call, they call me and they let me know, you know what? You've been accepted into this. Uh, the first auditions are on this day. At this time, come through. The audition is meanwhile, because uh, the lectures would end like at what time? Like at 7 p.m., 6, yeah. 6 to 7. But the auditions were happening after lunch. So it was like, I think, 2 or 3. So I had to skip a class. But even the lecturer understood. Because like uh. they, they all knew me. <laughs> so you explained that you're yeah, supposed... I told him. Because I met the lecturer. They were all my friends. Okay. So I met the lecturer and said, you know, there's this comedy thing I want to do. He's like, yeah, you should go for this. Like, like they, would oh, all, really? they would all agree. They're like, yeah, mm. you should do it. You're good. And I was like, yeah, so I might miss your lecture. He's like, no, it's fine. I'll send you the notes, you know, email, this and this. Oh, wow. Just, just go and do your thing. And those are things that encourage you. Because mm, mm, you, mm, you, mm. you start to realize there are people who believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Yeah. Because you'd expect him to say, no, 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 don't do it. You know, This comes this, first. This comes first. So he told me, no, please, go and do your thing. Just let me know how it goes. I come to La Bonita. There's, uh, they, we meet Daniel Omar is there, Napoleon, all these big guys, right? And, uh, and then the thing starts. Say, okay, what we're going to do is you go on stage, you do five minutes. Uh, for the judges, there was no audience. Five minutes is a long time. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long time when you're just starting, right? It's a long time. It's a long time. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know, you're talking like a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've done auditions. Anyway, we shall get there. I've done auditions of one minute, two minutes. Ouch. Anyway, so we, we get on, I get on stage. This was a time where I didn't even understand how jokes work, how you write them how you build them, because there's a whole science to it, there's a whole art to it. But we, I don't do these things. But of course, being with the Timothys and the like, they would help you here and there. So uh, they called me on stage. I don't even remember the jokes I did. There's a joke I think I did about a zebra crossing. I don't even know how it goes. Got a few giggles here and there. And, and, I, and before I left off stage, I think Napoleon made a, made a comment. He said, I like the joke. Uh, but there's that part where you talked about like northerners and what can you like put an accent add some acts to it you know some actions to it rather and I said okay okay I'll try to do that he said otherwise good stuff mm -hmm. at the end of it they call us back and I was in the top five and they said now the top five will appear on the TV show Mm -hmm. and we shall call you back on the day of the show like the day when there's an audience 200 people in the crowd and you do the material we record and you'll appear on TV Mm -hmm. so that's when the excitement kicks in you're like woo nice stuff nice stuff mm -hmm. the next week I get a call from Seba Chije Seba Chije Seba Chije was his at Emma very funny comedian he was so funny so funny <laughs> so he called me he said yes this is Emma from Comedy Files I said yes sir said uh, so you are on the lineup for this Wednesday they called me on a Tuesday you are on tomorrow's lineup uh, make sure you come smartly dressed and uh, we shall give you five minutes on stage you are among the first performers so 
So I get on stage, I do my jokes, I get good laughs, and I walk off stage very, very happy. Uh, I think that day, what a day we're given, 10K? Yeah, transport. Transport uh, yeah. to, to appreciate yeah. you for the work done. And then, of course, you get the reviews and the comments. They're like, uh, this is fine. Your first time getting money, what was that like? Hey, out of out of, out of of comedy, like professional. <laughs> 10K. Hey. I started making money out of the thing. <laughs> so at least there, when they ask you what has comedy given you, like, at least I have 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I remember uh, Seba Chiji called me backstage and he said, you know, you did well. However, if you could add more Luganda to your act, right, yeah. you will absolutely smash it. And, and when you don't know Luganda, what happens? No, no, because like, especially in Kampala, the audience is mostly a Luganda audience. Mm-hmm. They all know English, but there's something about the, the mother tongue that is more appealing and it gets a laugh easier. But where I'm trying to push myself is to be able to perform for somebody who doesn't know Luganda. Mm-hmm. So I think that was like the first big stage. And here we are, last <laughs> week. Which week? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, you had your own show. Right. What was that like? It's your first one, I assume. Not, I would say like a comedy special. I've, I've done shows, but I've not done a, I've not done a comedy special. Mm. Now, this was a stand-up special. So this is like taped. Uh, more than one hour and it's documented so it's something that you it's like a package like a product not just a regular show I sort of had this uh, Dave Chappelle feeling you know when you're walking on stage like okay it feels like okay (laughs) (laughs) but I I always wanted to ask for your opinion I never got got a chance to ask you you will you will get it because you're in the audience and I've I've always been asking everyone how was the show Mm -hmm. Uh, what do you think went well what can we improve on yeah Uh, but I'm glad most of the reviews are positive people people really had fun and that was the idea anyway from the start I was like Mm. ah Okay, okay. And I didn't see you. I don't know. Yeah, I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad because at some point you were pointing at people. I was like, ah, yeah, like, yeah, this is yeah, not, I hope this yeah, is yeah, not yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was at the front, and I swear I'm not sitting at the front again because a couple of people saw me. Mm. Like we saw you, we saw you. I was like, ah, okay. <laughs> Oh. Your plan isn't to be seen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am the one to see. I am the one to pick stories. Who is doing what, you know? So I'm like, okay, no, I'm not seeing in front again. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so when you walked in, you told me about your leg and how you keep getting infections. You say every after four months. Mm. What is it that mm. happened? How do you cope with that? Because I imagine it's, it's a lot of, I feel, is it tiptoeing all the time to be mm. careful that you don't get infected? Mm. So uh, maybe maybe for people who don't know what you're talking about, mm-hmm. uh, I am, I'm disabled in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, left, my left foot has what they call a foot drop. So a foot drop is when there's, there's, damage, there's damage to some nerves on, on, the, on the leg. Yeah. Uh, this happened when I was, because uh, when I was young, this is information from my mother. Because she told me when I was young, I think about a year old or two years, mm-hmm. I, uh, I had malaria. And at that time, the treatment for malaria was quinine. So quinine was the drug of choice. Right now it has changed. And they would inject you on the bum. Right? That's how they would administer the drug. Mm-hmm. So information from my mother, she says, uh, the nurse that injected me, because when it comes to injecting, when you're giving injections, there's a certain portion of the bum that shouldn't be injected because there are nerves that pass there. So you should be very, the medical personnel should be very careful because you could inject the wrong place and it affects the entire limb. Yeah. So that is what happened. The, the nurse was not very professional enough so there was some damage to the nerve. Mm. So she tells me, I think a few days later, I was improving, you know, because I had malaria. So I was improving. But then she noticed a child who was, uh, a child who was walking is now crawling. Oh. You know? It's like, what's wrong? What's wrong with my son? Because he has been walking, but now he's crawling. And then I went back to the doctor. Ah, no, it's fine. It's fine. Sometimes it happens. Oh. <laughs> It will get better. But then it never got better. Then I started walking again, but then a little bit of limp. And then so the foot, instead of being straight and steady, it mm-hmm. drops because the nerve is not supporting the muscles. So that's what happened. So I underwent some surgery it, to be able to walk again. Mm. Uh, when I was still young, I think like three years or something. So it leaves me with a sudden limp when I'm walking. Uh, some people don't notice it. 
You, you, you really don't. have to be attentive. Some I, people it, don't notice. Like the people I've been with at school and they notice when you're graduating. That <laughs> <laughs> that That's true? what I'm saying. Because I was seeing you for the first time. I was like, okay, this is him. This is how tall he is. Okay, okay. And then as time went on, I was like, wait, wait. Wait, there's yes, something. Yes, there's something. There's something. Yes. Yeah. And and by the interesting story, on that day, because right now as we speak, I'm actually sick because I have an infection. Exactly. The, the infection started last week because the show was last week on Friday. Not last week. Like, the other week. The other week. Yes. So do you know that I did that show on, on painkillers? I had to take painkillers for the whole day. You were already sick. I was sick, but the show had to happen. So I was on painkillers. And you were standing and, and walking an no for... Go. Yes, but the show had to happen. So I was on painkillers. That's why I didn't walk a lot. I was standing in one position because I like walking a lot on stage because it's more engaging. Yeah. But I couldn't. I kept pulling the stool to support myself every now and then. So, so the, the, the thing is with, with the foot drop sometimes, uh, because the foot, the dorsal part of the foot, the top part of the foot mm-hmm. is not supposed to touch the floor. Because the skin is made differently, almost like the way the palms are. Mm-hmm. But because your foot is curved like this, so sometimes the dorsal part, the top part of, this, of the, the foot, engages with the floor. Mm. Mm. And yet the skin on the top is not as tough as the skin under. So the skin that is on top, which should, should not touch the ground regularly, often touches the ground. And so it's, it easily gets bruised mm. and gets wounds every now and then. So, so, it's, so, so it's a challenge I get here and there. Every, every probably every six months or like twice a year, once a year, I will get an infection and uh, I'm very careful about it. So I'm always in shoes or sandals or you'll never see me walking bare feet. Or to protect. To protect myself, yeah. Yeah. Because it's uncomfortable for me at first. Uh, it's uncomfortable, but also... It's risky for me. And how was that in school? Because you, you know, you come yeah. from we come from different backgrounds. There's there's that. I remember. I think because there's a lot of bullying that comes into play. But because I'm generally a very nice person, like you can't hate me. Uh, I remember I had, I had had instances of bullying when in primary. I was fine. I don't even. I had. A, I think a few guys here there <laughs> would come to you and laugh at you and call oh. your name. But then when they get to know you. They're like, yo, this guy is funny. He's a very nice person. <laughs> so their mind. So if you changes. weren't funny. So if you are not, I think, I think it also, I think that's also probably the origin of the comedy or something. Because it's more like a protective skin that you wear mm. uh, to sort of prove to people that I'm, I'm just like anyone else. But what I, what I thank God for is that people who have that mindset when they first meet you and probably they belittle you or talk down on you is that a few moments later, a few days later, when they get to engage with you, their mindset completely flips. So I've had people in high school who, you know, because of their background, they don't respect others. or So a person keeps calling you name. But then a few weeks later, he's hugging you, he's buying you stuff. No apology. No apology. <laughs> oh, they're buying you stuff. <laughs> they're apologizing. Yeah, they're buying, they're buying I think that's a sign. That's a sign of apologizing. So I've never like had very like physical fights or anything. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not into that. But definitely, there are there are those people in the world. But I always just I always see through it. Yeah. And I don't put my mind into it. So I just I just live life the way it comes. In, in your coming to that space of you with a dropped, mm. do you call it a dropped foot? foot? Foot drop. Oh yeah. my god! I'm hearing it for the first you should, time. You should go go it. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I think I'll learn it. With a foot drop, you being a comedian, mm. as a, wearing it as a skin. Is there a moment in your life where you faced a crisis? Mm. And by crisis, I mean a mental health crisis. Mm-hmm. Is there a moment that you had to go through that? When I was still young, you want to still young. I think in my P five or something like that. Because because when you're young, you have hopes. So when I was young, I remember there's a time I think I felt really down because mm-hmm. you look at yourself and you think because there's some shoes I can't put on. I used to love football, right? But I oh, couldn't you can't play, football. play football. So I, I would always be like a goalkeeper or something because if I play, when I was young, I used to play a lot of football. But with time, like there's a lot of pressure that goes onto the foot. So you start feeling the pain and you think, nah. And you get worried if I get injured, if I break a leg, mm-hmm. it gets worse for me. So the thoughts sort of overwhelm you. And every now and, and when I was young, every now and then we just get to cry and cry alone and just start 
asking yourself, but God, why? Why why me? Why did this have to happen to me? But then you wake up the next morning and it's a new day, so you have fun. Was there a moment when your parents maybe walked in on you on a uh, breakdown? No. So never. they weren't aware? Uh, never. Mm-hmm. Never. But I think there's a time I talked to a cousin of mine, you know, when when it overwhelms you. She says, no, it's fine, you know, you're going to be fine, everything will be okay, you know. Uh, that's how life is, but we have to keep moving. Mm-hmm. So then you move on. And as an adult, how an, do you take care of your adult, mental health? I'm a very open person. So there's there's a handful of people that I talk to, like open up to. Because mm-hmm. the times when, uh, when, when I've had issues probably with my parents uh, regarding my career choice, because uh, until date, they are still not yet okay. With you doing comedy. Okay, like uh, convinced they're not convinced that comedy is the best choice for me. Wow. So, I remember there's a time when I was working on radio. Wait, there's also that. There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> there is How also... much time have we done? There's a lot of stuff. And we are, you know, we are skipping and jumping. Around. There is also that, like, you are yeah. too much. Journalism, medicine, comedy. So, so there's a time when, uh, when, I, when I got the radio gig and I was going to start working on radio, my, my dad wasn't happy about that. Wow. He was like, no, you didn't study journalism. Why are you working on radio? Mm, Why do you mm, want to get a job mm, in a mm. clinic and work in a clinic? But then for me, I'm looking at this as, look, I have fun on radio. Because for me, my, my life has always been about fun. <laughs> I wake up in the morning, I get on air with my colleague, we laugh about everything happening in the country for four hours and I'm out of the studio and I'm paid well at the end of the month. Yeah. You know, so why, why would I go to a clinic and stress from eight to eight? Because mm-hmm. you work from morning to night. Right, you even sleep there. There are places where you even sleep at the at the place. So for me, in my mind, I'm like, at least for me, this is better than the other. Yeah. So there are those conflicting moments where you have, and I'm a very obedient person. So like, I really want to make my parents happy, but also now such a crisis happens where you want to be happy, but then you also have to you want to them. be you. You want to be you, but then you also want to make them happy. So uh, there are those moments as 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 an adult. I remember that moment happened, and it wasn't it wasn't easy. But I had people that I call, I have friends that I call, and you have a candid conversation with them and mm-hmm. at the end of it you feel better and then what, what is interesting is the, the thing I've learned about doing comedy and doing any other thing yeah. other than medicine is that every time I achieve something my other relatives <laughs> <laughs> this is the beauty about it my other relatives they always call my parents oh do you know what I, I thought you were going to say? They claim me. They claim, of course, like they claim, but like they call my parents to tell them what Hillary has done, so I can have a show in like Arua or Gulu, mm-hmm. and 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 I'll find an, an uncle there, and he's like, "Oh, Hillary, I've seen adverts. You're coming to Arua." Oh yeah. I'm like, yes, I'm coming. He's like, yes, let me come. I'll buy a ticket. I'll buy a table. I'll bring my friends. Wow. So he, he works like he works for an NGO, and then he brings buys a table. He brings his friends. Like that's my that's my nephew right there. <laughs> and then you have a, you have the best show and he goes and calls your parents like what Hillary hasn't done to us <laughs> this boy is very you have a son who is very talented so then your father sits down and says ah, but <laughs> you can't complain because he's doing well right yeah then you go to Lyra remember I went to Lyra for a show and, and my mother is in Lyra at that time my father was also in Lyra you know but they all never came for the show but I have family that came for the show like cousins and uncles and everything and they always knew that Hillary is a comedian, but they have never watched you live. So they're like, this is our chance to watch Hillary. Yeah. So they, they all came for the show. At the end of the show, they say, I don't know why, but I have to call your father. It is them that always send the news and say, it is, your son is blessed. He's really, really, really good. Mm-hmm. So personally, I never like engage in that conversation. It's not like you call and say, yeah, the show went well or what. No, it's, it's the family that does that. Mm-hmm. Then there are videos. There are videos sometimes that are on TV. You appear on TV, and your cousin watches you or something. And during family gatherings, sometimes they're like, "Hey, I remember the last time I watched it. It was very nice." <laughs> <laughs> you know, something like that. So uh, then there are videos that trend on WhatsApp or social media, and it ends up on my father's oh. whatever. And then he watches you, and then peop- like people forward his workmates, his workmates at. Uh, and has he ever said anything? Yeah. Like you're good. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he never, he has never said you're good. It, but it, I think, I think he's only. What has he? What, what compliment has he managed to come uh, up with? I think not necessarily a compliment, but I think 
the concern of my parents has always been around the industry as a whole because with entertainment there's a lot of drugs yeah. you know there's all of that kind of bad behavior per se so it's a conversation we had even before I I I sought out to do comedy because my parents told me you want to do this but you know there are a lot of musicians and you know they do drugs and weed and all of this and I said for me I'm not going for that I just want to go and do comedy Mm. and make as much money as I can out of it. And I remember I told my dad, uh, I'm from a poor family and I just want to use everything that I can to make money. Yeah. So if I can work in a medical center, I'll do that and make money. If I can work on stage and make money, I'll also do that. Whatever I can, I will do it to try to make uh, my, my family better. Mm-hmm. So from that conversation is when he understood what I wanted. Uh, he always appreciates me for my effort yeah. In, in being straight. Mm-hmm. So he says, what I like about you is your... When, you're going, when I'm going for shows or anything, I always inform him and say, you know, I'm traveling to Morocco to have a show. I'll be back in two days. Uh, I always keep him updated. And he has never had, like, bad reports. Nobody has ever called him and said, he let us done this and this. He was fighting with someone, so he was drinking and threw bottles at such. Yeah. It's like, what I'm happy about is that you're finding your path. Uh, you're doing things that represent me well, right? So you're not out there spoiling the name of the family. You're mm. actually doing well. So I think those are kind of things that make me sort of calm down and say, yeah, <laughs> so far so good. <laughs> so what words would you want the listener to walk away with? You, you just have to go out in this world and try to enjoy every moment. <laughs> that's because that's 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 what I live by. Just trying to enjoy every moment. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I don't know. There's there's a saying. There's a saying in Latin. I think it's in Latin. It's about if you translate it to English, it's it's something about if you remember death, then you remember life, which basically means every time you remember that one day you will not be around is when you appreciate the fact that you're still around. Mm-hmm. So since you are alive, then just live. Yeah. Don't wait to die. Don't wait to die. <laughs> Don't wait for the deathbed. Don't wait for the deathbed. And you talked about probably three weeks or four weeks ago. You talked about having the show being streamed on Feza oh, for the people that missed. Yes, for the, the people, live show. People that missed because uh, the show was filmed and produced. Hopefully, it will be out by uh, August August 2022. So mm. hopefully, it will be out by then. I'm hoping to put to put it online. Mm-hmm. And you'll you'll be able to to find the details on my social media, on yeah. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at Dr. Hilary Okello. I'll I'll be posting where you can find it. So they should be looking out for that. You should be looking out for that. And uh, does someone get to contact you for anything? Yes. I don't think it's for doctor. Do they uh, call you? <laughs> yeah, people call me for that. Okay. I have I have friends who call me for. I'm that. going to start calling you. I'll try. <laughs> I have friends who call me like. I'm going to try. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a challenge because the people call you like at night at two a.m. Uh, and like you're the only connection they have in the medical world. Boy, you know, and they're like, Hilary, I'm in this situation. What do I do? And then you give them advice. <laughs> so your calls are welcome. I don't know why it feels weird. <laughs> <laughs> your calls are welcome. Uh, anyway, so for 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 all of that, I I do I do. Uh, comedy performances. So MC be, as well. Could be MC, could be a performing just at a wedding or an event, corporate event, so anything like the like. How do they contact you? On social media, mm-hmm. Dr. Hilary Okello. My numbers are there. My email is there. <laughs> <laughs> Let me work on that. Let me work on that. But of course, you can inbox me. I always reply to it. You everyone. guys don't choose email. <laughs> it's, not, it's not going to see it. <laughs> You have to call and inform him there is an email. You have to call me, but my numbers are all over the place. Okay. Yeah. In his message of making every moment count, Dr. Hillary reminds us to be present at all costs, at all times. Make every moment count. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Hashtag We Love Guzi Chuanuka. If you loved what you heard, make sure you subscribe to Hashtag We Love Guzi Chuanuka in your podcast platform of choice and share it with your friends, loved ones, and every other person affected by the millennial world around us. Also, feel free to share your insights about what connected with you on social media and be sure to tag us. We are at hashtag we now visit one car on Facebook and Instagram and on Twitter. Our handle is at SCNK Podcast. Endeavor to check out our website navigation.com for more insightful conversations. Catch you next week and until then remember to make every moment count.